Damn, hello. Unit three, lesson one, the square root function. A few topics before the discussion of the square root function. We're going to go back in time a little bit and talk about what the heck a square root is. The square root of a number a, the square root of a is b, if and only if b squared is equal to a. You need to understand that. And this is a very uh, elusive topic for many people. This tells us, this definition tells us that A is always positive because something squared is always positive. And this B squared is A. So A is always positive. B can be positive or negative because, for example, 5 squared is 25 and negative 5 squared is 25. Negative 5 in parentheses squared is 25. Negative numbers have no square roots. They can't have any square roots because nothing squared is negative. Number 25 has two square roots, 5 negative 5, since 5 squared, negative, blah, blah, blah. Analytically, we denote the positive square root of A with the symbol square root of A. We know that. Analytically, we denote the negative square root of A with the symbol negative square root of A. Example, square root of 9, 3, negative square root of 9, negative 3, square root of 49, 7, negative square root of, negative 7. This is going to tell us a lot because we're going to talk about the square root function. We're going to talk about the square root of x thing. And this is certainly, well, let's not go there yet. But if we take x a variable that represents any real numbers, square root of x must be positive, and the x must be positive. That's a fact. The output of this little guy right here is going to be positive. This is positive, and x must be positive. That's a fact. That flows right from this definition. Okay? As well as the square root of x squared must be positive. And we know x squared is positive because anything squared is positive. So this also is going to have to be positive because x squared is positive. The square root of x squared, I'm spitting all over my screen. Gross. Sorry. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. And we know the absolute value of x is positive by definition. In fact, this is the definition in all back to the video. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Here we know the absolute value of x is always positive. In fact, the absolute, what does the absolute value of x? This is definition of absolute value of x. The absolute value of x is x if x is positive. Hello? It's negative x if x is, wait a minute, that looks negative. That is not negative, is it? That guy right there is not negative because x is negative. So negative, negative makes it positive. So this looks like an even to a life. Oh, 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 no. That is always positive. Negative, negative, positive, and positive is positive. Okay, so here's an example. This, this is this is tough. This right here is tough for a lot of math teachers. I've seen a lot of math teachers that don't know this fact. But that's a whole nother story. So let's go. What is the square root of x squared if x is negative 4? Well, here we go. This is going to be the square root in parentheses negative 4 squared. That is going to be the square root of 16 which we know is the absolute value of negative 4, which is equal to 4. And what we do many times is we leave this step out. Well, we don't know. If we're just asked that, we don't know where we started. But if we started with negative 4, then it's going to be the absolute value of negative 4, which is 4. But it doesn't matter. It's equal to 4 anyway. That's just an example of this bottom part, this bottom piece of this absolute value guide. And we did 
talk about this a little bit in through and we reviewed this a little bit in that review lesson the nth root of x the nth root of x is x to the 1 over n the left side is in radical form the right side is in rational expression rational exponent form rational exponent because this is a rational number this is radical form rational exponent form and that's what we need to do. This is another topic in calculus that we need to understand is whenever I have something like that, I need to be able to take a radical form and put it in rational form so that I can manipulate it. Do the antiderivative, find the derivative, find the antiderivative, because I cannot do that as if it's in radical form. So it's going to be very imperative that we learn how to go back and forth with these two forms. Because most of the time in calculus, we use this guy right here. Example, the square root of 9, in most cases, the 2 is not written. The 2 is implied. But by definition, the square root of 9 is 9 to the 1 half power, which is 3. And we actually reviewed this a little bit. So this is a review of the review. Okay, so here's my first example. And I'll write the following in rational form. Make sure you use parentheses. 7x to the one-half power. 7x to the one-half power. Now I can find the derivative of that. Now I can anti-differentiate that. I can't do that here. In terms that you don't know because you're not in calculus, you will know next year. The cube root of x. That is simply x to the one-third power. The square... Oh, 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 oh. This is going to be x cubed to the one-half power. And guess how I can write that? I can actually also write that. Let me see if I can put it up here. x to the three-halves power. That's a bad two. Okay, this, let's go with this guy right here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That is going to be, let's use a different color, Lee. That's going to be 5x squared, that whole thing, to the one-third power. And you should notice that we're using laws of exponents. Once we put it in rational form, rational exponent form, that we're using the laws of exponents. And how are we going to do? We're going to go, what? Parentheses, 5x to the two-thirds. And keep in mind, that's not bad. I could write that this way if I felt froggy. My battery is running low on my pen. That's why it's lagging a little bit. Okay, so that's writing the rationals, radicals in rational form. Radicals in rational form. Here we're going to simplify or evaluate the following using new calculator. Okay, here we go. All right, no questions. Simplify or evaluate the following using no calculator. Let's see here. This guy here is going to be easy. This is going to be 4x squared, all to the one-half power. Now I'm going to use the laws of exponents, and I'm going to write this as, do have enough room, I think I do, 4 to the one-half power, x squared to the one-half power. Now I know what this just means, the square root of 4, that's 2, x squared, and now I'm going to use a power to a power. 2 times 1 half is 1. This is just x. Okay. This guy right here. 8 squared to the 1 third power. I'm going to write that 8 squared to the 1 third power. Which is going to be 8 to the two-thirds power, and check this out. This is going to be 8 to the one-third power squared. 
And we know what the cube root of 8 is. That's just the cube root. The cube root of 8 is 2. Ah! The cube root of 8 is 2, so that's simply just 2 squared, which is 4. And I can verify that. And the only reason I did it this way is so that I... Ah! Shut up. Give me a little bit more page and that won't happen. It's so that we can practice going from radical to rational. Because guess what I could have done with this? I could have just said, hey, that's the cube root of 64. And now we know what times what times what is 64? Uh, 4. I could have just done that as well. But this is just an exercise in using, converting from radical to rational. How about this guy right here? Let's go back to, let's go black. This is going to be 4x cubed to the 1 half power, which is 4 to the 1 half power. X, yeah, now I'm really getting messed up. Four to the one half is two, so I'm just going to write that as two x to the three halves. Okay, let's try this guy right here. This is going to be twenty-seven. Yes, you are taping. Let's go red. Twenty-seven x squared. <whistles> to the one-third power. Yeah, you need batteries bad, dude. So this is going to be 27. Make sure I don't make a mistake. X to the two-thirds power. Ooh. Which is going to be 27 X to the one-third power. Because I'm manipulating this product here squared this is going to be 27 to the one-third power going the long way to Versailles X to the one-third power and all of that is going to be squared this is 3 X to the one-third all of that is squared so that's going to be 9x to the two-thirds power. That's what that thing is simplified, written in rational exponent form. Now let's talk about the very important square root function, because we're going to look at the square root function. And I think last year in Algebra 2... Okay, so now we're going to talk about the square root of function. f of x is the square root of x, or it can be written f of x is x to the one-half power. You mostly, as a function, you will mostly see it as square root of x. Here's what you need to realize. The domain of square root of x is x is greater than or equal to zero. Verbally, all x greater than zero. You cannot square root a negative. The output of square root is always positive. So the range is y is greater than or equal to zero as well. Verbally, all y is greater than zero. Here's the graph. The graph of square root of x is always increasing, but it increases slowly. So as x increase, the y's increase, but the y's increase slowly. The x's increase, the y's do increase, but slow. What we're going to do, and this is going to be very important graphical representation of this problem, we're going to use the graph to estimate these particular values. So I'm going to go to 2, and I'm going to come up here and put a little dot right here. Boop, boop, boop. That's 2, f of 2. Now tell me, by the graph, what do you think f of 2 looks like? You can actually count those grids, because there are 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 5 grids. Hey, what's that look like? Looks like 2.2, doesn't it? Because it's uh, 
one, two, three, four, five, or 2.4. Looks like 2.4 because each of these would be two tenths, right? Two tenths, four tenths, six tenths, eight tenths, ten tenths. So that looks like about uh, 2.4, right? A little bit less than 2.5. Do you see that? Sir? 1.4. Sorry. I was getting a little carried away with the decimals. Thank you. It should be 1.4. 1, 1. Let's go F of 5. Let's put a little dot on F of 5. 5 F of 5. And each line here is 2 tenths. What does F of 5 look like? It's about... What do you think F of 5 is? It's about 2.2. 2. 2. 2. It might be a little bit over 2.2. 2. Let's just for giggles, let's go 2.22 just for fun. Because it doesn't tell us how many decimal places, but it looks like it's a little bit over 2.2. 2. Let's go F of 10. Oh, F of 10. F of 10 looks like it's going to be about 3.2, right? And let's go F of 13, F of 13, ah! ah! uh-oh, my screen's freaking out, went crazy on me. F of 13, let's go 1, 2, 3, and we got 1, 2, 3. Point two, about 3.6. True or false? Agree or disagree? 3.6. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use our graphing utility and we're going to estimate the following to three decimal places and see how close we get. Scottery to two. Bam. One point. Look at that. Oh. 1.414. Pretty daggone close. F of 5. F of 5. Square root to 5. Three decimal places. 2.236. Oh, it's a little bit low on my estimation, but pretty daggone close, actually. What, one hundredth off? F of 10. Square root of 10. 3.16, uh-oh, uh-oh, 3.16, again, pretty daggone close. F of 13, score to 13. Well, look at this, 3.605. Now let's talk about these average rates of change. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the average rate of change from 1 to 3. So this is a good time to point out, to review, that the average rate of change is this the slope of the line. True or false? Because this average rate of change is this guy right here. From 1 to 3. Ah! Is going to be F of 3 minus F of 1 over... 3 minus 1. True or false? That's true. That's the average rate of change. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the slope of the line. The slope of what line? It's the slope of this line right here. I'm going to do a line segment. I'm going to do a red line segment. It's a red line segment. It's the slope of the line from this guy. Mm. It's the slope of that line. The average rate of change from 1 to 3 is the slope of that line. Let's find the slope of that line. You could actually estimate the slope of that line with that graph too, but let's just use our graphing calculator and find the average rate of change from 1 to 3. So that's going to be the square root of 3 minus the square root of 1 
bam, which is going to be this, 0 0.7320 divided by 2, which is going to be 0 0.3660. That's the slope of that line. Not very steep. Let's find the average rate of change from 3 to 5. The average rate of change from 3 to 5 is going to be this guy, f of 5. I just found this number. You know I'm finding this number with my graphing calculator, right? With my calculator. This is going to be f of 5 minus f of 3. Again, over 5 minus 3. Over 2. So let's find that guy right there. Square to 5. That's going to be 0 0.5040 divided by 2, which is going to be 0 0.2520. And we always want to go to four decimal places in this class because we do four decimal places in calculus. Hey, guess what that thing represents? That represents the slope of the line from 3 to 5. Let's do a different color this time. Let's do this. Let's do, uh, oh, I never did get that red line. Let's do a red line. And it almost looks like the same slope, but we know it's a little bit different, don't we? We know it's a little bit lower because, because 0 0.2520 is less than 0.3660. Let's find the slope of the line from 5 to 7. Or the average rate of change from 5 to 7. This is going to be f of 7. Let's do a different color, Lee. f of 7 minus f of 5 over 7 minus 5. Square to 7. Minus square to 5. It's going to be 0 0.4096. And notice I always truncate. I don't round. So in calculus, you can either truncate or round. Do Okay, and so we're going to look at 0 0.4096 divided by 2. And we notice, oh, that is equal to 0 0.2048. And now I have a question for the audience. What's happening to these average rates of change? They are decreasing, right? And so just for a brief moment, what do you think this guy here would be? This is a tough question. What do you think that... What do you think that number is close to? Okay, so let's see what's in the next page for this guy right here. So what we are going to do is... We're going to pause this video. We're actually going to, going to 